Hi, we're the Dragon Cheerleaders, and you're watching Big Game Coverage on KSAT 12. John Jay at Southwest is our game of the week tonight. They're two of the 66 undefeated UIL Texas high school football teams entering week 10, Mary. Yes, and this District 14 5 d one contest is going down at Frazier Field at Dragon Stadium. The winner grabs at least a share of the district title. All right, first quarter, the Dragons are up 3-0 and kicking off after a made field goal. John Jay's Nicholas Rios fields the ball around the 13-yard line. Down the right side he goes, and the Dragons are not going to get him as Rios takes that ball 87 yards to the house. What an answer. The extra point was blocked, so Jay leads 6-3. Second quarter, Dragons leading 10 to 6 and punting away. Jaden Pritchett gets under the ball, but it goes right through his arms and it's recovered by the Dragons number 33, Tristan Quintanilla. That would lead to a short touchdown plunge from Reagan Gonzalez and the Dragons lead 16 to 6, your halftime score. Now Southwest will control the game from there and the Southwest Dragons win this game 37-18 to remain undefeated. There's a stretch that we played very dominant football, and that little stretch of football was a difference for us, and we're 9-0 in district champions. It means that for tonight, tonight, everything's good in the world. A bunch of kids came together. That's what it means, baby! That's what it means right there. All those hours we put in, this is what we do. It's an unbelievable feeling, man. It's all about those kids. That is awesome. Let's go to the stadium now where Veterans Memorial was home tonight looking to protect their house against the Harlandale Indians. First quarter, Patriots ball. The handoff goes to Chris Bassett who runs to his left and he gets down to the 20-yard line. Moments later, and third and goal, Bassett caps off the drive with this short touchdown. The Patriots strike first 7-0 and Veterans Memorial takes it 49-33. Over at Lenoff Stadium, the Clemens Buffaloes are playing football with the East Central Hornets and the Hornets, well, they had some sting tonight. Quarterback Isaiah Mackey Fakes the handoff and he throws a pretty pass to Darion Smith Klein for a 27 yard touchdown. It's 14 nothing Hornets. Later on, Mackey finds William Holton for a 16 yard TD and the Hornets led 21 zip in the first quarter and East Central gets the dub 56 to 7. Let's take you to Alamo Stadium where District 12 5 AD2 leader Burbank hosts Edison. First quarter, Bulldogs QB Kevin Hernandez calls his own number. The senior Cuts across the middle, dodging tackles, breaks loose on the outside, but not without another juke. That's a 50 yard Hernandez house call and the 64 to 7 win seals the deal for Burbank. The Bulldogs clinch a playoff spot, closing in on their first district championship since 1978. Jefferson enters week 10 and second behind Burbank in District 12 5 AD2 hosting Brackenridge tonight. Mustangs ahead 28 0 in the second quarter until Eagles sophomore Daniel Rincon stretches across the goal line for the touchdown. Jefferson, however, answers right back. Senior John Fernandez shows off his wheels, racing the distance 4 6, and the Mustangs win 48 to 10. 6 and 2 Bandera squaring off against 0 and 8 Memorial at Edgewood Veterans Memorial Stadium. Bandera in the red zone. Senior QB Dylan Peace slings it to Jeffrey Thomas in the corner of the end zone. Extends Bandera's lead 28 to 0. Fourth quarter now. Riley Moran takes the handoff and walks it in. Bulldogs win by shutout 42 to 0. All right, check it out. The captains for Somerset and Kennedy shaking hands before their District 14 for a one matchup tonight. First quarter, Somerset Bulldogs quarterback Caleb Flores hands it off to John Alvarez, and he gets outside and breaks off a 19-yard touchdown. The Bulldogs lead this 7 to nothing, and number 7 Somerset wins by the final of 74 to 7. Members of the McCollum cheerleaders, well, they were having fun at Harlandale Memorial Stadium tonight. The Cowboys are taking on the Bernie Greyhounds. Second quarter, Bernie up 21 nothing, adding to their league. QB Hank Hendricks throws over the middle to Ben Bays and that will go down as a 41 yard touchdown. They lead this 13 5 a 2 matchup 28 zip and the Bernie Greyhounds roll 50 to nothing to clinch a playoff berth. Let's go back to District 14 5 a 1 Southwest Legacy visiting the South Sand Bobcats third quarter Titans quarterback Isaiah Campa throws it to Kanoa Esquivel. The DB falls down so Esquivel takes off and he scores a 61 yard touchdown and Southwest Legacy trails 21 7 but the Bob 
Bobcats answer right back. Alex Trevino scores from eight yards away, and South Sand leads this one 28 to 7. And that score is South Sand's leading 41 14 late in the fourth. Both sides have already clinched the playoff berth. Half section now. 12 top 12's 10th ranked Antonian hosting Concordia Lutheran at Ferreira Field. The Apaches break the stalemate in the first quarter. Senior receiver Adon Bernal with a nice piece of running 59 yard reception to infiltrate enemy territory and senior Michael Moreno caps off the drive with a 25 yard rushing TD. Antonian proves victorious 38 to 28. The cutest cheerleaders cheering on a 28-6 a bout between 7th ranked Harlan and Warren. Hawks on the board first as Aldrich Trotter breaks the plane. 7-0 Harlan. How about this answer from Warren? Davian Gonzalez airs one out and what a grab by sophomore Jansen Maglona for the 73 yard connection and Lee Thomas would cap off the drive with a rushing score. But in the end it's Harlan. Excuse me, they're on top 63 to 20 right now in the fourth quarter. Two four and one teams in 27 6 a Reagan and Clark squaring off. Cougars punting deep in their own zone and the Rattlers come up with a block. It's Cole Higby with the scoop and score. The block punt TD makes it 28 to 0. Later, Matt Butler comes up with a big defensive play interception and returns it 80 yards for six. And the Rattlers win it 49 to 12. He is still running up next. We got the BGC road trip taking us up 281 and then across Highway 46. But first, let's listen to the O'Connor High School Marching Band. We'll be right back.